Welcome back to the bench everyone. In the previous video I talked about speeding up a Darlington transistor circuit and I asked if people would be interested in uh, me discussing more about the Darlington transistor circuit itself and I had some people interested so go ahead and do that. The Darlington configuration gets its name from Sidney Darlington who developed the circuit back in the early 50s before transistors were really even common out there. He was also active in the war effort developing radar and guidance systems so he had certainly made his mark and I think he was also active in the development of one of the early camera tubes. So first of all what is the gain of the circuit? It's going to be extremely high that's why we have the circuit arranged like this. This transistor is driving this transistor and the way it works out the gain multiplies they just don't add together they actually multiply so with the two transistors you end up with a very high gain and speaking of gain we're talking about the current gain or the beta of the circuit and beta is represented with a Greek letter this B shape here has kind of a long tail beta is the ratio of the collector current to the base current. In other words, the collector current divided by the base current is the beta of the transistor. And the current gain is not really straightforward. I have the transistors labeled Q1 and Q2, and the total beta of the Darlington circuit is the beta of Q1 times the beta of Q2 plus the beta of Q1 plus the beta of Q2. So let's pretend here we have a transistor with the beta of 100 on Q1 and we have a power transistor over here with 50 and we'll have a base current going in here of 100 microamps but to make it easy I want to keep the units the same so I'll say there is a current of 0.1 milliamps. So to find the collector current of this transistor we take 0.1 times 100 and that's going to be 10 milliamps flowing in this circuit. This branch of the circuit actually. But what current is going in to this transistor? Well this current goes somewhere so what happens is these two currents converge in the emitter. So we actually have, in this part of the circuit, 10.1 milliamps flowing. And again, to find the collector current, we just multiply this by our beta of 50. So in this branch of the circuit, we have 505 milliamps. But the currents converge at this point, so the current, so the total current being drawn is 0.515 milliamps. So to find the beta of this circuit, we take this divided by this, and it ends up being 5150. So let's see if the math works out here. So we, we have 100 times 50, which is 5,000 plus 100 plus 50 which is 5150. So that's how we get the gain of the Darlington pair. Now you often hear people say it's just the gain of this times the gain of this transistor. And you can use that too because in this case 5150 is not a lot of difference from just 5000. Now let's take a look at a few interesting aspects of this Darlington circuit. For one thing, if we consider this our zero volt reference point, it's going to take 1.3 volts to turn this circuit on because you have two base emitter junctions to pass through and each one's going to be about 0.65 volts. And you know, with a single transistor circuit, it takes around 0.65 volts before the transistor starts conducting. And again, we have those two junctions, so it's going to be around 1.3 volts on the base here before this starts conducting. 
yeah, that's not really a big deal in most circumstances unless you're dealing with really low voltage type digital circuits or something that you want to control a large current with the output. You have to make sure you have enough voltage going into the base here before this circuit will turn on. Another interesting attribute of the Darlington circuit is that the second transistor, which I'm calling Q2 here, does not saturate. It can't saturate. The reason being is this. Think about a single transistor for a minute. Pretend the first transistor is not there. When this transistor is in saturation, the base voltage is actually higher than the collector voltage. The reason being is the collector to emitter voltage in saturation will be fairly low. Depending on the current, it might be 1 or 200 millivolts. Maybe a bit higher with higher currents. But again, you need about 650 millivolts to start the transistor conducting. So in that case, the base is going to have a higher voltage than the collector. But in the Darlington configuration, you need to have current going this way with this transistor in order to turn this second transistor on. So because of that, this transistor, Q2, cannot go into saturation. And that might be helpful because large power transistors are somewhat slow coming out of saturation. So it could be beneficial there. But you also have to watch out, because this is not saturated, there will be a larger voltage drop and depends on the current but it'll be around eh, a little less than a volt it'll be around 0.65 volts up to a little less than a volt so if you have 10 amps flowing through this transistor and about a volt dropping across it you have to dissipate 10 watts so it's something to watch out for have a little darlington circuit set up here ignore this other stuff around here it's not part of the circuit so we have a supply of about 9 volts and the base resistor is this 10K. also have a blue LED in series with that and with the transistor voltage drops and the voltage drop from the LED I have about 400 microamps of current flowing. So I press the button it lights up the incandescent bulb which is in the collector circuit you can see the LED lights up as well. So let's check the saturation here. So I'll put my probe on the emitter and the other probe on the collector of Q2. And look at that. The voltage is 0.654 or 654 millivolts. So it is not saturating. Okay, I swapped out the 10K resistor with a 1K. You can see the LED is glowing a lot brighter. So we have about 10 times the current. And let's see if the transistor saturated or not. Nope. It's turned on slightly harder than it was, but it's still at 0.632 volts or 632 millivolts. So yeah, we cannot saturate that transistor in the Darlington circuit. Now if you watched my last video where I talked about adding the speed up resistor, what happens is when this transistor turns off, there's a little bit of charge remaining here that keeps this transistor on and it slows it down. So if we add a resistor here, that would drain off that charge. But it does create another interesting situation. This transistor is not going to turn on until the voltage drop across this resistor is 0.65 volts. So we have to push enough current through this resistor to get that voltage drop. In other words, this transistor is going to stay turned off and this transistor is going to be doing all the work at low currents. Let's check it out. So I've replaced the resistor with a 470K ohm. And when I hit the button, I don't know if you can see that, but the LED does come on very dimly. But look what's happening. This incandescent bulb does not turn on anymore. 
So how much current is going through the circuit? Well, if I measure the voltage drop across the um, speed up resistor, which is that one right there, which is across the base to emitter junction of the output transistor. I have to contort my arms here to get a measurement. I got the probes reversed, but so it's not negative. It's actually 243 millivolts. So if I punch that up on the calculator, 243 divided by the 120 ohm resistor I'm using, there's actually two milliamps flowing through the resistor. And let's check the voltage drop from emitter to collector. Well, I know my batteries are at 8.6 volts. They're not fresh. They're a little bit lower. So if I measure my battery terminal from here, 8.62, and across the collector to emitter, it's going to be about the same. So this transistor is off. It's got full voltages. It's not conducting at all. And if you wanted, you could check with the current range. But uh, take my word for it, this transistor is certainly not conducting because not enough voltage on the base to turn it on. It doesn't have that 650 millivolts needed to turn it on. One final thought on the speed up resistor is the impact on gain. Yes, there will be an impact on gain. Using our previous example, we had 10.1 milliamps flowing into the base of this transistor, but now we added this resistor here of 120 ohms. To get the 650 millivolts needed to turn this transistor on, I have to put enough current through this resistor to do that, and that's going to take about five and a half milliamps of current. So now, from my 10.1, I'm diverting that much through this resistor, and the remaining four point whatever goes into the base of this. So it is going to impact gain. So is a loss of gain a big deal in the Darlington circuit? Well, not really. If you think about it, a power transistor is going to have a pretty small gain. It might be around 50, it could even be 100. And if you take a gain of 5,000 and drop it down to 2,000 or even 1,000, that's still a heck of a lot more. So yes, uh, speeding up the circuit is going to be a compromise. But still, you're going to have a lot of gain remaining. Well, at this point, I'm going to wrap it up and make this a two-part video because this video is going to be long and, you know, people, they see a video over a half hour and I'm not going to watch this. So I think it would be better having the video split into two. And then I'll work on the Z-Clay configuration. Plus, at the end of this, I want to talk about audio output stages using these two. I think there's some very interesting points and you might want to stick around for that. So I will catch you in part two. Thanks for watching.